So my channel recently reached 1,000 subscribers here, so I thought I would kind of like celebrate by doing a Q&A here. That's, that's kind of what people do when they hit 1,000 subscribers because that is a huge milestone here on YouTube. Once you hit 1,000 subscribers, then you'll have one more milestone to hit. Uh, it's like 4,000 watch hours before you can get monetized, and the first 1,000 subscribers is always the hardest. And the fact that 1,000 people are willing to subscribe and sit here and watch my videos is always just astounding. I'm going to say, if you hear some like weird banging noises going on, I don't know what the microphone's gonna pick up, but my son is upstairs using a hole punch and making confetti, and the hole punch is terrible. Yeah, so there's a lot of banging of hole punches going on upstairs. Okay, so you guys sent in quite the collection of questions here. I've thought about some of the answers, and some of them I'm like, uh, I don't know, I'll figure it out as I go. So the first one, first question, uh, I'm going to separate them into like non-book questions and then you guys had some book questions that I'll do afterwards. So the first non-book question that I have are, what are some of your favorite foods to cook? Yes. So I mentioned in my afternoon routine video a while ago that I'm trying to figure out what to make is the hardest struggle. And I don't really mind cooking other than the fact that we are really picky pretty much all of us in this house are really picky and yeah, just trying to figure out what to make. So one of my like favorite things to make is really anytime I can hide veggies in a meal. And I'm not really even just talking about my kids here. I also, I have like texture issues when it comes to food. So some vegetables when cooked or etc. Uh, even like onions, I like grate my onions so I can't feel the texture. Uh, anytime I can have some kind of dish where I can put a bunch of that stuff in there and not notice it. That's my kind of thing. Um, currently, that means that there's like a spicy meat sauce. It's kind of like a rip off of the old spaghetti factory spicy meat sauce that I've been making lately. And for some reason, that's my favorite thing to cook right now. Um, but that is also because I pre-cook my ground beef. I don't like working with raw meat. But by the time it comes to actually make the meal, I've already pre-cooked the ground beef. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go with that, like a spicy meat sauce with a pasta together. That's currently my favorite thing. Oh, a good one is, what is your favorite Bible verse lately? And I think I shared this one in my February favorites video. Right now, I keep going back to Psalm 37, verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. That's, that's what I need right now in this season, winter. March when winter never ends kind of thing. So that's currently a verse I keep turning to, but if I feel like every other week it kind of changes. Okay, this is a tricky question. And it says, what would be the perfect heart schooling homeschool day? And whew, I was thinking about this and I think a lot of what we do right now, so I'll kind of explain our like normal course of our day, but I mean, every day is different, but Generally, once the kids are awake, we gather together and it makes it sound like I have a lot more kids than just two. But um, while they're eating breakfast, I do our devotional together. I don't like the word devotional, but currently I'm reading um, Clay and Sally Clarkson's 24 Family Ways as like a very loose guide. We are using this um, and we're going through its 24 weeks and different I don't know, ways for kids to grow and areas to work on and stuff like that. And we're, so we're doing that, we're memorizing a Bible verse each week and we're doing that. So starting out with some kind of Bible time, I don't like the word devotions because I feel like that puts the emphasis on whatever supplement that you're doing instead of like the emphasis on the Bible. But anyway, that's a side note. So after that, then generally I like to go into some more like educational, homeschool, typical homeschool stuff. And I would prefer if this could be an area that my kids are interested in. That is a big thing to me. I want to learn things that I'm interested in and they're interested in. And so this changes depending what we're doing. 
And then I feel like the heart schooling aspect just keeps coming up throughout the day whenever there are like tempers that flare up or anything like that. I feel like we're constantly like bringing it back and trying to remind them how to be kind people and to love Jesus, love people, and help people love Jesus, like I said in my heart schooling video. So yeah, I don't know if I can like say what the perfect home homeschool heart school day would be because it's it so depends where my kids take me. I mean, ideally they would act like perfect ain't perfect little angels, but then there would never be an opportunity to do the work to like really get to their hearts. So try to remind myself that when they are acting out, it's a good learning opportunity that wouldn't come up otherwise. So I'm not sure if that really answers that one, but that's that's my answer. Okay, what is something you've always wanted to try but haven't yet? Oh dear. Okay, so I've always wanted... See, I don't know if this is something I want to try. This is something I want to do. I would love to be able to play the ukulele. And Jared bought me one. It's hanging on my wall. He bought me one a couple years ago for my birthday. And it just turns out I don't actually want to learn it. I just want to know how to do it. And... That is something I often see in my kids and it's frustrating to see because you have to put the work in and I know that. But I've also realized that that's not my priority. Like, I mean, there's other things I would obviously rather be doing. And so the ukulele sits on the wall taunting me and I don't know, hopefully one of my kids will just play it so that I can stop feeling bad. I also have no sense of timing. I cannot clap and sing at the same time like that. I need to concentrate. So. Like, I used to play piano and found the timing really hard, so I can't imagine playing a stringed instrument like a ukulele and getting the timing right. I think it would just be a disaster. Um, as I'm talking about this, though, it one of the upcoming questions uh, reminds me that actually one thing that I've always wanted to do that I have not done, that I might do in the future, it's more likely than me learning ukulele, is to start a podcast. I have always thought that would be interesting, but... I have like very niche things that I like in podcasts and I'm currently just not at the point where I'm ready to have one. We'll talk more about that when it gets to a different question. Um, but the next one is, what is your favorite place you have traveled to for vacation? It specifically says for, for vacation in this question, but I'm gonna leave out those words because I think my favorite place that I've traveled to is England. Uh, I love the countryside, the trains, the transportation, everything, pretty much everything. The weather, I love the weather. Um, so it wasn't for vacation. I was living there for a while as an au pair, like a nanny, but more of a maid than a nanny. Um, so that's my favorite place. But if I like, there's been lots of places that we've gone that are meaningful in some way. Like when we went to South Africa to adopt our son, like obviously South Africa holds a soft, special place in my heart but I think if I had to pick a place that I would re like want to go to again I mean we do want to go to South Africa so my son can see where he was born and stuff but it would it would definitely have to be England okay now back to the podcast question because this question is what are your favorite podcasts and I have how many did I write down here I wrote down four but one I haven't listened to in a long time and one is no longer in existence so two the one that I listen to the most frequently is Sally Clarkson. I think it is so helpful to have someone with adult children who has homeschooled her children and from what I have seen has used like very much a, like a heart schooling kind of mentality behind homeschooling and raising her children. And so I love listening to her. Like it, it feels like I'm sitting down with a mentor or folding my laundry or washing my dishes while my mentor is talking to me. Uh, so I listen to pretty much all of her podcasts that come out. I have that one set to automatically download each new episode, which is the only podcast that I do that for. And then I do really like the Daily Grace Co. Um, this is a company that sells a lot of Bible studies and Bible products of sorts. And I really enjoy the podcast. I haven't listened to it now for probably the last six months. I, I go in waves with podcasts, honestly. Um, so I haven't listened to it in a while, but they have some really good ones. The, uh, about a year or 
year or two ago, I don't remember now, did a really good one on the like importance of memorizing scripture. And there was just a few that were like really inspiring me a couple years ago or last year. And yeah, I should start listening to that one again. But like I said, I just go in in spurts, waves. And then I, I have also historically liked Journey Women. Uh, that one is is hosted by Hunter Belis. And my only problem with that one, like I always feel like I come away with some great knowledge and stuff, but I don't like the interview format for podcasts. If I'm going to be listening, I mean, it's okay every now and then, but honestly, even Sally Clarkson, if she's interviewing someone, I don't really listen to those. I just want to listen to who I signed up to listen to. Um, I think that's probably rare. I don't know. There was a while ago where I was subscribed to a number of different podcasts and you knew when so-and-so was coming out with a new book because they would be on every single podcast. And it was like this, listening to the same podcast over and over again. And I just, I didn't like that. And I don't know, I feel like I, yeah, sign up to listen to certain people. So that's, that's who I want to hear from. Um, but I understand why people do interview formats. I just, I don't really like that. So I haven't listened to the Journey Women one for a long time, but I have heard some really good ones that I've really enjoyed and I feel like I've learned a lot from. And then probably my all time favorite, but it's, it's been like four years since their last episode and they're not doing it anymore, is the At Home podcast. So this was a bunch of girls, um, ladies. They started it with more and then the second season they had less ladies, but I have followed Kristen Rogers on Instagram since Instagram was a thing. Like honestly, we're talking 2011 here, maybe 2012. She was so inspiring. She is kind of like the, the catalyst that got me thinking about homeschooling. And uh, so she was one of the hosts of this podcast and it was pretty much a homeschool, a Christian homeschooling and like home stuff and biblical teaching. It was like so many different things in one. And I would like to see if I could find a place online where I could go back and re-listen to the episodes. There was quite a few ladies. The second season was better because there was just less people. Um, I can't remember how many of the, them were hosting. I think the first year was like something like seven of them. And then it dropped down to like four or five. And that was more manageable to get your, get my mind around like who was actually talking. So if I was ever to start a podcast, which I mean, I would love to do, but I want certain things for that. Um, it would be in the same vein as the at home podcast. Um, I would love to do it with someone. I even have a friend in mind, but Kim, come on. We talked about doing a podcast forever ago, if you're watching this. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just not the, the right time in life yet. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, now I think we are onto the book questions. And I did snag a few books off of my shelves to answer some of these questions. Okay, the first one I actually thought was really generous. It said, if you were stranded on a deserted island, but had five books with you, what would they be? And I was like, oh, five. This is actually quite a bit. Um, cause I think I've heard this question before, but you only get like three books and honestly, normally I'm like, okay, obviously I have the Bible. We're not going to count that, but no, the Bible is going to be one of my five books because five books, I feel like that's lots of options. So we're going with the Bible and I'm going with re readability here. So I picked up my complete adventures of Sherlock Holmes. This would be on that deserted Island with me. Oh, I don't own or read any survival stories. I mean, that would probably be a good way to go about this is something, you know, some way to like survive on this deserted island, but I'm gonna read until I die because I'm going to not know how to survive anyway. Um, but I'm gonna take my Sherlock, I'm gonna take my Bible, and then I decided I was going to take an Agatha Christie short story collection. And I haven't read this one yet, but I it would have to be the Miss Marple short story collection. Uh, I have enjoyed the short stories that I have read that have been a mix of detectives. And so I feel like this one, this one's got to be a good one. So those three, and then I want to do a poetry collection. So I got a book from the library a while ago that I think I'm going to buy. It's called A Poem for Every Night of the Year. There's also A Poem for Every Day of the Year, but I haven't read that one yet. So I'm going to take a collection of A Poem for Every Night of the Year. So that gives me like 365, 366 poems. So, I mean like that's a big book and these are big books and like the Bible. That only puts me at four books and I honestly, oh, maybe I'll take, um, oh, this is hard because like how do you, how do you lock in the last one? I think maybe this one, 
I'm not sure about. I might take Frank Peretti's The Oath because that one is a lot about like spiritual warfare and well I mean a lot of his books are but I think I would pick that one because if there was ever a time to be remembering to pray and um that kind of thing I feel like maybe it would be when you're on a deserted island maybe you'd be praying anyway I'm not sure I'm not sure about that fifth book but I got the other four figured out okay the next book question is what is the book you've read no not that one where are we here what book has stayed with you the longest and impacted you the most okay so this is a book I have not reread in years and I don't follow this author so I don't, I don't know where he's at these days but this has had the biggest impact on my life and this is Radical by David Platt. I read this book back in 2011 and this spurred us, me and Jared, our daughter, um, to go to Uganda and we visited my cousin while he was uh, working and his wife while they were doing some missions work out there and then later that year we started the adoption process and like I feel like this has been the most life-changing book I haven't read it in a long time I don't know this is taking back your faith from the American dream and it's about living a radical life and I'm curious to know what I would think about it now but it definitely has impacted me the most and I mean it resulted in a child in my home so I feel like this one deserves to be on the list. Okay, what is the book you've read that pleasantly surprised you the most and why? Okay, I picked out two books, two very different books here. So the first one is The Thursday Murder Club. I, I've talked about this book like nonstop in the last six months on my booktube channel because normally when it comes to mainstream mystery books, I find they're, they're too graphic, they're too lots of things. But this one was just funny like our main character is an old lady in a retirement village and they're her and a bunch of her pals are trying to solve a murder and it's just written in such classic old lady voice I just love it um, so I went into this expecting nothing slash maybe something terrible and came out with like a favorite book and then um, earlier this year January I think I read Persuasion by Jane Austen and I just don't know where I stand with Jane Austen yet, but I found myself picking up this book a lot and I was reading it over other more contemporary books that I was reading at the time and I didn't even give this one five stars, I don't think. I think I gave it like four, maybe four and a half, but it surprised me. So I'm gonna go with this one. Okay, this next question is one that I like I read and I thought about and I don't have an answer to. So I'm gonna read it and we'll see if something comes to me. It says, besides the Bible, what is one book everyone should read? Ah, and I don't know. If I was going to go like the fiction route, I would almost say Safely Home by Randy Alcorn. That is about uh, persecution in China, Chinese Christians being persecuted. Um, but if I had to go nonfiction, I don't know. Gospel Fluency by Jeff Vanderstelt or Prodigal God by by who? I want to say Tim Keller. I'm not sure about the author. But so that's three books. Those three books everybody needs to read. Oh, and why? Um, yeah, I think it's really interesting to learn about persecution in the church because of Christianity, something that we don't really face here. And I think it's a good thing to analyze how we are living our lives. And yeah, it made me do that. And then Gospel Fluency is all about speaking the gospel in your everyday speech. And it's a book that I listen to in the summer or the fall and want to get my hands on and read and like highlight and yeah, read and reread and reread. And then the Prodigal God is taking the story of the prodigal son and like flipping the script honestly uh i feel like i have heard that story over and over again i know what it's about but i was so surprised at the stuff that came out in that book and how it's really the prodigal sons because if anything that older brother was had much more of a heart issue than the younger brother and yeah, if you haven't read any of those three books, I would highly recommend them. What is the oddest thing you've used as a bookmark? 
Oh, honestly, I just like 90% of the time, I'll either just like flip my book upside down or sometimes a doggy ear. Sometimes I just grab like here, I've got nail polish sitting beside me. I just grab whatever. Sometimes it's like the sleeve of a shirt that, that somebody left lying around or a receipt or a piece of paper or my phone. Like I just, I just use whatever I have. I'm also pretty good at um, just closing my book and finding my spot later. I think that has to do with having really long bus rides as a kid and not always having a bookmark around. So I just would close my book and find my spot later when I was on the bus again. Okay, and then the last question is, what is your favorite, one of your favorite bookish memories? And I really, I feel like I've read more in the last number of years than I have for a long time, but I was thinking about it. And back in the day, when I was in elementary school, we obviously, we had an elementary school library. I don't really remember taking books out from it. I remember story time. I remember Robert Munch coming to our school, but I don't remember like taking books home. But we had what was called the book bus, but it was actually just a trailer that was pulled by a vehicle. So we didn't have a town library. I think my town growing up had about 900 people in it, but it was like a farming community. So there's, there's quite a few people around. Um, and so we didn't, weren't big enough for a library. So this book bus slash a trailer would come and you could go inside. And I read, what was that book that I read last month? Bookshop on the Corner. It wasn't that great of a book, but it, it really reminded me of that whole, the book bus and like how you could go inside this trailer and get out books and stuff. So I guess I'll go with that one. Okay, wow, this ended up being fairly long. Thank you to everyone who sent in questions, all those who have subscribed and supported my channel in this way. Thank you very much. Um, if you guys have some specific uh, video ideas or certain topics that you prefer that I talk about on here, heart schooling, decluttering, I have no idea. I honestly am not really sure where this channel is going. It is, to me, it just feels like a, a step of obedience. I feel like God has told me to do this and unfortunately, like Abram, he has not told me my destination. He's just told me to come to the land that he will show me. And I don't, I have lots of ideas, but I don't always want to film them. Uh, but I feel like right now my job is to just keep showing up and be faithful here. And God will show me in the future. But if you guys have like specific things you wanna converse about that I should do a video on, let me know. So thanks for being here.